It's time to get started. It's been a long day already. I want to ask Chairman Green if he'll open us with prayer. Let us pray. Dear God, please give me the strength to endure. Father, we pray for this endurance, and we pray for peace, O oh Father. And we pray in, that we will find the blessings and the lessons that it contains. Please give me the endurance to continue ahead, to forge ahead, and make the right decisions for this great state of Georgia. And Father, we pray that you will guide our thoughts, our words, our actions, so that I walk and all of us walk in a path of peace and love. And Father, we just pray for the leaders of, these, of this state. We pray for the people of this state. And Lord, we just ask all of these things in their holy name. In the name of our Lord and Savior, we ask you to bless us and guide us in all things. Amen. Thank you, sir. Okay, uh, where's the doorkeeper back there? We're waiting on Mr. Math Representative Mathis. If he will come to the podium, Representative Mathis, please, ma'am. Hey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm here for House Bill 1029 and uh, House Bill 130. It's to make the Twiggs County Probate Judge a nonpartisan election for the probate judge and the magistrate of, of Twiggs County. I uh, see no questions. Thank you, sir. That's both bills, 1029 and 1030. Is Senator Anderson in the back? Senator Black. Senator? Hey, hey Senator, right there at that podium right there. Can't sing around as bad on old folks. Uh, come to you today with uh, Senate Bill 176, which is a little retirement bill. This is the situation with the people that's uh, on the ERS retirement system. Got them retired, and it says if uh, they come back to work uh, on the 49 percent, the uh, employer and it must contribute employee portion and the employer portion to the retirement system. This will. Uh, uh, be uh, a little effort to boost up our retirement fund. This will also become a greater factor as we begin to get people retiring under the new hybrid retirement system. And so, uh, from from what I understand, sir, to this is uh, identical to what we passed last time as it relates to teachers. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Okay, number 27, Chairman Fleming. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Senator, did you say the employer would have to pay both halves or the employee? The employer. Employer will pay both halves. Thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. No more questions. Okay, hold on. Hi. Senator Black. Sir. Oh, okay. Leader Burns. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Senator, better known as Representative Black. <laughs> yes, sir. In, in, your heyday, in your heyday, we, we appreciate uh, you bringing this bill, but your work here over the years in the House and in the Senate, representing uh, your district and working for the people of Georgia, we appreciate your service and appreciate you and wish you the best. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, hey, Senator. Oh, never mind. Go ahead. We thought we had a question, but we don't now. Okay. Um, is Senator Wilkinson here. Uh, 
Senator Wilkinson, I think you have two bills, Senate Bill 295 and Senate Bill 362. Which one are you going to do first? 295, Mr. Okay. Chairman. Very good. Go ahead. Thank you very much. Uh, Senate Bill 295 is a cleanup from Senate Bill 171 last year. It is a cleanup that was worked out between ACCG and COAG before the session. It is intended to ensure that there will be no double dipping in possible pay raises for this year. It only impacts this year, and uh, this committee sub clarifies that it only deals with state cost of living adjustments and does not impact local supplements. If there, that's 295. If there's any okay. Any any questions from anyone on the committee? Okay, hold hold on, um, Chairman Fleming. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator, you said. COAG is in favor of this bill? They are. Okay, thank you so much. Uh -huh. Okay, very good. No more questions. Uh, Senate Bill 362. Senate Bill 362 is a bill that uh, deals with fees associated with the impounding of animals in several of our small counties. I had sheriffs come to me when they had an exotic animal, for instance, a water buffalo in one case that was impounded and they didn't have the facilities to keep the animal. Of course, when you impound an animal, the way it works now, the person can come back and claim it and, and, and pay the fees associated with it. This person just left the water buffalo and walked away. So they had to get a farmer who had the facilities to feed it and take care of it for, um, for the specified period. Then they took it to the livestock auction barn and sold it. And they got a lot of money for it, but they, were, they could not pay the farmer his actual cost for feeding the animal because this hasn't been updated in a long time. So uh, by law, the money had to stay in the county general fund and they could not adequately compensate the farmer. So I got in touch with the Department of Agriculture, uh, Commissioner Black, they looked at this and came up with this bill. It's just a means of when people do not come back and claim those animals that have been impounded, that are danger, that are out on the highway and those kind of things, it provides for adequately compensating the people who take care of them when the animal's disposed of. Okay, I think we have a question. Representative Williams, you want to push your button and use the microphone? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator, I have not experienced that problem in Liberty County. Where exactly are you from that you got water buffalo running around? Well, you know, it's nothing against water buffalo, but when they're standing out in the middle of the highway and it's midnight, you know, there is a, the possibility of an accident yeah. and injury and those kind of things. So it's a safety issue. I agree with that. I just wanted to know where I'd know where not to come, but... <laughs> My, my final question is, how much does it cost to feed one of these critters while they're in jail? Uh, I'm not sure. I think why uh, in the law, I believe they've written that up, the actual cost. Uh, I think the farmer would submit the bills, the actual cost he had, and he could be compensated for the actual cost. Representative Williams, ju just for your information and for any trivia contest you ever compete in, it takes about 3% of their body weight per day in food. Well, I know you'll have a lot of them in Columbus. Thank you for your wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I'm just here to share the knowledge with you. Okay, Chairman Knight, what, what button you at over there? Is that it, Mr. Chairman? Um, uh, Senator, thank you. A couple of questions. I think uh, all seriousness to piggyback on Representative Williams' question, uh, it does bring into question exotic animals. So if this is a problem that is regarding exotic animals, is there an issue with people who have exotic animals and does that need to be looked at? In other words, if you have a water buffalo or an elephant, uh, and y'all think I'm joking, I understand there are zoos and private people who are bringing those in. Is that something we need to look at as a state because obviously they're exotic, they're not It, it may here. be, and, and maybe I gave the wrong impression, and maybe that was not a good example. It does apply to all animals. It could be cattle, whore, but, it, it, but of course exotic animals also, and you could be correct, but it's a challenge sometimes when people have any kind of animal, and some people just walk off and leave them, and then something has to happen to them. 
Senator, does your bill, uh, further question, Mr. Chairman, does your bill also, does this apply to also at the local level with, with dogs and, and, and things such as that we've, we've passed some laws, uh, those some that I, I don't necessarily agree with, at the local level in regards to the ability of the local government to overcharge in a lot of cases uh, or charge excessive fees uh, to owners is this affect that in any way or allow them to continue to up those fees? My understanding is that it has to be the actual cost and that receipts have to be turned in for the actual cost. All right, I, and I understand that, but sometimes people make decisions and buy extra that ordinarily wouldn't be uh, I there. Think, but I think that'd be up to the county commissioners to look at that and probably make that determination. Thank you, Senator. Yes, sir. I don't know if I want to do this one or not. Um, Mr. Hatchett. Mr. Mr. Chairman, does this have anything to do with Carol Baskin? Uh, could, could you repeat your question, please? <laughs> I don't need to. Oh. Uh, okay. Uh, did, did Mr. Anderson come up? I don't see any more questions. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, members of the committee, and I'm glad that we could have this discussion this morning. Thank you, sir. Ms. Lewis, is, is Mr. Anderson out there? Okay, Mr. Beach. Okay. Mr. Chairman and members of the committee, I bring before you um, Senate Bill 340, and basically what this is is it creates a reoccurring day uh, on the state calendar on September 1st dedicated to Childhood Cancer Awareness Day. And I, I got to tell you, when I first took this bill on, I thought it was somewhat symbolic until I met these families and met these children and saw how important this was to them. And, and I just want to give you a few facts. Forty-three children every day are di diagnosed with cancer. That's 16,000 children per year. And despite these high numbers, only 4% of the federal budget is uh, dedicated towards childhood cancer research. And I know that everyone in this room has known somebody that's been affected by cancer. And as a parent, the worst thing you could hear is, "My child has, your child has cancer. And uh, so what I want to do is just uh, have this day, and I think what it'll do is bring awareness to children's cancer, but it'll also help direct private funding to cancer research for pediatric cancer. Um, so I just uh, would ask you to consider this. I believe Georgia's already gold strong, but I ask your support on this legislation today to prove that our citizens in our country, that we do care about our children here in the state of Georgia. So, Mr. Chairman, thank you for hearing me, and I would uh, open it up for questions. Uh, I, let's see, I see no questions. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Well, if, is Mr. Anderson there yet? Okay, thank you, ma'am. Well, let's see. That was Senate Bill 144. It's off. Um, okay, let's set the calendar for tomorrow. House Bill 1029. All in favor say aye. All opposed like sign. House Bill 1030. All in favor say aye. All opposed like sign. Senate Bill 176, all in favor say aye. All opposed, like sign. Senate Bill 295, all in favor say aye. All opposed, like sign. Senate Bill 362, all in favor say aye. All opposed, like sign. That's the calendar for today. Calendar for today. Thank you all. Y'all have a great day. <laughs>